praise worship. I invite you to bookmark your wonderful conversations and your hugs and greetings of one another. And uh, we'll continue with those later on today following worship in our fellowship time in Grace Hall. And as always, I invite you to stand as you feel led and as you're able and join your voice with those of our singers in our videos, starting with Holy Spirit by Francesca Baraselli, I believe is how you say that. <laughs> There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come Your glory, God, is what I 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Amen. Oh, thank you. We'll continue with singing with We Believe. It's another new one for our congregation by Newsboy. Desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again We believe Powerful belief statements and faith statements. 
Oh, when I came across that song, I thought, oh, how perfect. And the one before that, Holy Spirit, what a way to celebrate in singing this wonderful occasion of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given to us. Oh, amen. It's time now for our Reflection Connection. And they're making their way. Yes, our interns are going to give the reflection today. Thank you, ladies. Hello? You have to go first. <laughs> Uh-oh, I go first. You know, this has been an absolutely amazing um, journey. Oh, please join me. <laughs> <laughs> This has been an amazing journey, especially with this woman, but also with all of you. Um, you all are amazing because you're able to be part of a journey with us, with me. I don't want to speak for you, sorry. Um, but you also were able to, to just allow that opportunity where we could create relationships, create space where you walked with me, through different parts of your ministry here in this church, and as well gave me the opportunity to learn from you. And that's amazing. You guys are amazing folks. I love your ministry, and I cannot wait to see what this church will be doing um, in the future, because you guys are amazing folks. So, um, yesterday, we went and DJed at an event. We had to pass by, please help me, Weeders Comp Spawn? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Them. <laughs> we, we passed by that uh, cemetery, mortuary. Okay. <laughs> and there were so many cars out there, and there were so many people. Um, putting flowers out there and and this it wasn't strange but one of the things that really moved me was that there was a man laying down um in front of a tomb like he was like laying like this like he was talking to the 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 person that was passing that passed and that really impacted me as I thought about myself in this place today and how we are so tied to our past um, and so as I reflected on Memorial Day and our veterans and all those that have come before us, I thought of myself, and I'm not trying to play the race card, but I thought about me as an African-American woman graduating with a master's and all of the people, all of the women, Latino, black, white, Mexican, whatever, um, that have forged this for me. Um, and I don't take that lightly. I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors, and we are inextricably tied together. Our spiritual DNA, regardless of what our skin looks like, we are the human race. And if it wasn't for those, those women, we'll talk about men on Father's Day, those women, <laughs> those women, I mean, think about it, the ones that nursed are the young, those that work the fields, those that change their, the diapers of all the children, those that have sung lullabies and, and sat in nurseries, and those that refused to do those things and went into the political arena, those that said the church will not silence me. I, we, I can't speak for you either. <laughs> you wanna be included in that one? We stand as a representative of that plight. And so I remember them today. And I honor them today. And I honor each and every one of you for accepting me into this community. I want to just take 20 seconds and let's just be silent for those, whether they're veterans or not. And let's um, remember those that have come before us.
Amen. Let's move forward in the celebration. Amen? Amen. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, ladies, sisters. You're awesome. And we have been honored to have you amongst us, to count you part of Grace's family. Let's continue our time of praise worship with our final song for this part of worship, um, Build Your Kingdom Here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. Your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for you are our joy and prize, to see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our Church, we pray revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness be. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on. Amen. 
Oh, yes. Uh, oh, didn't that get the spirit going? Well, get your pencils and paper out so that you can uh, hear what's coming up and make note in your calendars of the upcoming ministry opportunities here at Grace. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a beautiful day. Wendy's playing our Vanna White this morning. <laughs> this is a beautiful cake made by Jenny Barnes. Once in a while, she'll be uh, providing a cake that will be raffled off. We'll have the raffle after church today, and the proceeds go to help uh, the youth mission trip that will take place this summer. Beautiful little ladybug. I was trying to figure out how I was going to start planning, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> Grace's yard sale, big deal, every year. Ah. Huge, big time, big, it's big, it's big. You need to be there. June 5th and 6th, this photo. Donated by... Donated by Fred. Rife. Fred, raise your hand. That's Fred. <laughs> um, tickets will be on sale next week and the winner will be announced June 7th. And Wendy wanted to remind us that you can sign up for Relay for Life next Sunday after church in Grace Hall. So everyone knows about Camille, right? Shelter for the homeless. So twice a week we serve there. So the 28th, which is this coming Thursday and Sunday the 31st, we are in need of service at that place. So on Thursday night, you serve food. You don't have to cook. On Sunday morning, you prepare the food, you purchase the food. If you would like to help with that, maybe you want to just buy some biscuits or something, I don't know. Um, talk to Dave Orr. Don't forget. Write that down. <laughs> And please join us next door in Grace Hall after worship for a special reception to celebrate Vet and Leah. There will be cake and also cards to sign, so please join us. Is it the butterfly? Is that that bug cake? No. That one's being no. raffled. No. <laughs> like my mom, I'm like, no. <laughs> Denise Krosniak is collecting new stuffed bunnies for the Children's Hospital in Denver. The last day to drop them off are at the church here um, on May 31st, and that is Denise. May is Mental Health Month. Every week in our bulletin and Monday email, there will be a link to an article or website that shares important information. So be mindful of that in your Monday email. Um, I under Reverend Sandy's direction, I do the outreach fund, and I really don't report on that, but I thought you'd like to know, like, um, just in this month, we've uh, helped two families with utility bills. One family was, I won't tell you the amount, it was substantial, and that's because you give, so thank you for that. Your money is going to help people that are working hard, but just for one reason or another fall behind on life's necessities. Right, and now for this week's birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, Gracie will be taking, Gracie, do you want to do the birthday cake for us? Thank you. If you have a birthday or anniversary this week, there'll be a birthday cake going around. Um, any contribution is greatly appreciated. It does help those in the community. Uh, let's see, oh, tomorrow, Gracie's friend, Heather, who's with us today, will be celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> birthday. Also tomorrow, Evelyn Munch. On Tuesday, Emily Lindley. Wednesday, Elizabeth Zwiebel. Crazy. On Thursday, Carol Martin. Also, Missy Martin on Thursday. And Saturday, Dee Melander, as well as Richard Laidlaw. Wow. Thank you. Woo, lots of birthdays. Lots of birthdays. And I don't believe there were any anniversaries for this week, but happy birthday to all of you. Let us continue with worship.
Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you. Let us join together in our call to worship. The day of Pentecost is here. God's children have gathered together in this place. We are transformed into God's family by God's spirit joining with ours. Come, spirit of admiration. Come and open our hearts to our sisters and brothers. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, spirit of peace and calm, trembling hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, breath of God, and overturn our conversational lives. Come, Holy Spirit. And as you're standing, I invite you to turn to those around you. And, hello. There you go. Uh, turn to those around you, pass the peace of Christ. <laughs> peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Oh something for you today uh, that I would like to give you so just afterwards if we can okay meet and talk that would be awesome over we'll we'll get we'll catch up over Grace Hall I'm sure <laughs> congratulations graduate <laughs> peace of Christ yes and also with you darling uh, what a joy to see you in worship <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> I have a card um, that we didn't know if you guys were coming or not, so we just we just Luann signed your name in it. If that was okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, darling. <laughs> All right. I, I I and I had Alex and Emery. <laughs>
seated and I invite our children to come forward for children's time. Howdy, howdy, howdy. It's Pentecost. I do love Pentecost. Now, I have been told that I have an overactive imagination. But do you know what visualizing is? Yeah, yeah. Anybody in school, you learn about visualizing. You learn to close your eyes and just kind of see what it must have been like or how it's gonna be like if you're sci-fi. Okay, so this is what I think. After Easter, you know, a big thing, big thing, big thing. And then it was over. And do we remember exactly when Easter was? Not really, do we? It was a while back, right? It was just a while back. It came, it went, and we don't really give it much thought. And I don't think, I mean, the disciples had to get on with it you know, because they were kind of told to, you know, you will go do this. Okay, so they had to kind of get on with it. And then this is how I think. They were all sitting around the table eating something real common like sloppy joes. Okay. <laughs> and so the disciples were all sitting around eating like their sloppy joes and not thinking much about anything really. You know, just kind of, I mean, like what we do when we eat dinner together, right? How was your day? Oh, you wouldn't believe who I saw. You know, oh, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I think that I really did do that, you know. Okay, but, <laughs> God, who has the final word, decided maybe everybody was sitting around a little bit too much. Or he decided they just needed time to ponder what had happened. I don't know. Do you know what ponder means? Well, you're doing it right now. It means you don't know what's going on, so you just kind of think about it. You just kind of take time to think about it. And one thing I know about God is he's not subtle sometimes. I mean, you know, think about it. Think about the flood and Noah's ark. Was that subtle? Do you know what subtle means? That was not subtle at all. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's not subtle. And so while they're sitting around, a big wind appears. And we know about wind because we live in Wyoming. Okay, so big wind, guys. Big wind, big wind. It doesn't sound big. It doesn't sound big. Okay. Okay. And then, if that's not enough, this is the part I love. Now, I'm going to ask you what that is, and you're going to say what? A red ribbon. But we're going to pretend because we have active imaginations, okay? And so we're all sitting around, and we're looking at each other, and we're going, what is that wind? What is that wind? And then, over your head, big flames shot out of everybody's heads. <laughs> and so, like, you're looking at me, and I'm looking at you, and it's like, forget the sloppy Joe. What the heck is happening? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We got flames coming out of our heads. You know, and I wish I could tell you the rest of the story, but you know what? That's Pastor Sandy's job. <laughs> So I'm going to leave you right there wondering about that big wind and flame shooting out of the disciples' heads. And you will do that, right? Because we never <laughs> talk to each other. All right. But let's thank God for giving us a wind to get us up off our butts. Okay? So that brings us to a song. The Holy Ghost, he takes the chicken out of me. Oh, the Holy Ghost, he takes the chicken out of me. He helps me make decisions that are good for me. <laughs> we have to laugh that. We'll fill you in on that. But the Holy Ghost, he takes the chicken out of me. I'm too much of an optimist to sing the verse that's there. It's about beating the devil. And I think, 
let's not beat them black and blue. Let's persuade them, <laughs> shall we? Amen. Okay, amen. Thanks, guys. Uh, you're welcome. Take your plane and let it burn. Take that away from Denise, would you? <laughs> Don't give Denise toys during church. We have a very special, special opportunity to celebrate two very special people in our midst today. So I invite forward our interns, Miss Yvette Christie and Miss Leah Coleman. So if you would come forward. I wanted to just give you a little bit of background to remember why and when these lovely women came um, to be among us. Come closer to me. I <laughs> right there, right there, right there. So we remember, actually I remember back to last spring when first I got a call um, from Vet and she said, um, I need to have an internship program, a place for my internship program with my degree program at Isle of School of Theology. And I said, okay, and we'd never met before, and she came and um, sat in my office, and we talked for a long, long time, and I said, I think this would be wonderful, and it has turned out to be a great blessing. So Vet came to join us. She joined our church in May and then began her internship um, with her Master's of Divinity degree program in August of last year. And then I remember getting a call from Leah, whom I've known because she is a member at First United Methodist Church in town, and we've just been able to connect um, over the years through a couple of different things. And so Leah said, well, I want to come talk to you. And I thought, what is going on around here that the two Isla students in all of Cheyenne, Wyoming came to me and to Grace. And Leah said, well, I, you know, I need to do this internship with my Master's of Divinity degree, and um, I'm going to be meeting with all of the United Methodist churches in town. And so we kind of talked, and I said, well, Leah, I would really love for you to do it at Grace if you want to do it at Grace. And she said, oh, good. I didn't want to go to the other churches anyway. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we have been greatly blessed to be able to have the two interns in Wyoming from Isla here at Grace. And this is a great blessing that we've had. We've been able to see them um, participate in many different ways um, in our worship, leadership, and different ministries of the church. And then a couple of months ago, as you remember, um, Wellington United Methodist Fellowship in Colorado um, needed someone to come and help with worship leadership, and so we've seen a little bit less of Leah and Vet as they've kind of taken turns out there um, to lead worship, plan worship, and preach out there, so that's been really great. We come up to um, an ending of this relationship, an ending of this time, as both of these women are finishing up their requirements for their master's degree, and they will graduate Oh, they're finished. Yeah. They're finished. Um, they will graduate from Isle of School of Theology um, on June the 3rd. And so that'll be, yay, ooh! I just wanted to remind you of what's going to kind of happen from here on out. We know that Leah is a member at first, um, and so probably because her daughter is... Um, very involved in the youth group there. She will continue her membership there, but it doesn't mean that you might not see her from time to time. Um, Leah is a certified candidate in the United Methodist Church, which means she's on the journey to become ordained as an ordained elder. Um, she is choosing to take a little bit more time so that Kaylee, her daughter, can graduate from high school here in Cheyenne before she goes to the commissioning piece of that process when she might be asked to move away, as we know itinerant elders are asked to move. Um, Yvette is um, 
in relationship with the District Committee on Ministry of the Wyoming District of the United Methodist Church. And hopefully this next fall, or at the very latest, the next spring, um, she will also become a certified candidate, as is Leah. And um, then there's a little bit of work that they do with their district committees before going on to the big conference board of ordained ministry, um, where they both will be ordained in a few years. So Vet is a member here at Grace, so you absolutely will continue to see her. Um, you will be able to support her as a candidate um, through some various processes that will have to happen at church conference, etc. Here. Was, did you want to say something? What? Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Denise. <laughs> but we want to take some time to celebrate them today as they have come to us. They have had valuable ministry experience and they have been in relationship with us, but we know this time comes to a close. So part of what the process has been for this internship is that both Leah and Vet have had lay committees of about four people each that have met with them um, <laughs> monthly. And I invite those lay committees to come Sorry, forward. You can't kill the thing in church. No, for your tears. Oh. <laughs> There's a moth up here. It's very I distracting. <laughs> and so lay committees, go ahead and come on down. We have a plan. Vet, should we start with the secrets or? Oh, there goes the first one off the list. Okay, so what we have done as a committee is thought very hard, watched you grow, loved you every day, and we probably picked up on a couple of funny things. Brian, can you give me water? <laughs> well, we got you something that will look much more professional for water. When you have that desk, you know, kind of like not quite in the empty office that we have up there, we have something to go on your desk. So even if you're not having a bad day, you will think of the squirrely things that we have helped you with. The other thing in this bag, besides lots of paper and bags, oh, and a card. You had a dream back in the beginning of Romans 12, too. You brought this vase. You brought some rocks. Tra one man's trash is another man's treasure. And so <laughs> it's become your treasure, honey. <laughs> It's been filled with love, filled with prayer. We hope you like it. We hope you remember us because we will always remember you. There we go. Yeah, something. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I'm not near the off-the-cuff speaker that uh, Wanda is, but uh, we also have had a journey with Leah. Come on, step out here. You're, you're the... You know. <laughs> Yeah, you're trying to hide, you know. Yes. Uh, of our two interns, Leah tends to be the the quieter one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I said that out loud, <laughs> as if no one else knew. But um, 
<laughs> anyway, we have come across some fun times as well. And, and you have just stepped up to the bar, uh, just off the cuff. You know, I wish that I had your gift to just, oh, we need to fill that in. Yes, as if it were planned that she was supposed to do that. So we thank you for that. But I had a few things that, from the grapevine, a few comments about Leah and her time here as she has grown with us. Uh, we, our group, of course, you know, met, as Re Reverend Sandy said, met with Leah monthly, and we discussed her goals and her uh, concerns and her experiences through this process. Uh, as the year went on, our focus was on her experience in attaining the goals that she had set and that we had helped her form and redefine as time went on. And we talked about how her confidence had grown over that time. Another comment uh, from, from amongst the group and the community here at Grace, Leah has become a member of my spiritual family as well as a pastoral caregiver. Leah has found her wings and ventured into ministry outside our congregation. Yes, in Wellington. Mm -hmm. And Leah has grown and encourages us to grow as a congregation and as individuals. Leah served, she chaired our, uh, this spring, our prayer, prayer, prayer and care team. And, then, and she sought out and engaged in all roles which a pastor serves. Yes. Uh, she has a natural ability to sense the joys and concerns of persons she encounters and easily makes herself available without appearing intrusive. Uh, and I, I personally experienced some of that, too. I'm like, wow, did I just open myself up like that? <laughs> that was pretty cool. She has shown, shown the ability to maintain her gentle, guiding spirit, even in the face of adversity. Being a single mom is not an easy thing to do, to work full-time and go to school full-time and you just and serve in the church. Awesome, awesome. She is concerned about people. These are all things you guys already know, and some of you have shared these with me. And she easily gets her point across. She is a very pleasant individual. Leah has not only exhibited an openness to others' ideas, but is also able to guide others to broadening their views. In her social skills and professionalism, she is a dignified and polite person. She endeavors to present thoughts without minimizing the position of others and is very tactful about that. We are confident that Leah will become a competent and inspirational spiritual leader of a congregation wherever she is called to serve. She possesses the personality, the dignity, the tact, and the commitment. And experience is what she needs now. So... Put her in, coach. Mm -hmm. right. And just a little gift to you um, along your journey and to remember this time that we have shared with you. And, of course, you're leaving us as far as regular membership kind of thing goes, and, but we'll have to make sure that we talk with our Methodist men so that any time that we have a gathering, a dinner, that it's got to be a dance. <laughs> So I'm going to ask our interns to stand here, and if the lay committees would come um, behind them, so turn around, actually face me, yeah, like that, and you come around behind them, and then I invite all of you, as you are able and feel led, if you would like to stand, and we're going to lay hands on Leah and Vet and pray, so if we can kind of make some connection here, you can touch the shoulder of somebody in front of you, or... Um, whatever, as you feel comfortable. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy and gracious and loving God, we give you such thanks for these two wonderful souls whom you have brought to us for a time. We pray for Leah and for Vet, 
that as they finish up this portion of their journey and go forth into the next, that your spirit is always present with them in a very real way. We ask your blessings upon them. We ask your guidance. We ask your peace when things seem to be shifting and moving, that they would find their place, that they would find courage in you to be able to stand up tall and speak with their voice and your spirit guiding them. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, can we get this? So, the party's not over, since I'm the loud one. Where is she? Um, so, uh, Leah and I wanted to honor Reverend Sandy in our own way. So we're gonna do that at this time. It won't be long. I know how Methodists are about time. Give us a second. Wow, uh, boy, that was a pretty powerful moment, y'all. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, there are so many different ways where we can thank you for our journey and everything that you are and have been and are continued to be. She is a wonderful mentor. Her advice is amazing and, and subtle and strong and powerful all at the same time. You, you're, you're just... Um, an amazing teacher and mentor. And one thing that I definitely learned from her, excuse me, is the importance of saying thank you. <laughs> and so one gift that we got to is a whole host of thank you cards. <laughs> For different occasions and flavors, but the point is always there and it's important to give gratitude and thanks for those that are helping you and serving and um, just being the body of God. So the other thing that I learned about Reverend Sandy that I brought to Leah's attention when we were discussing this is Reverend Sandy's love of books. So if you could open that. That's from Leah and I. This woman reads a lot. A lot. So we got her a gift card to Cokesbury to um, send her on her way to Denver and teach him good. <laughs> Is that proper? No. <laughs> Whatever. Um, the other thing you may not know about Reverend Sandy that I learned was her love of scarves. I can't stand this. <laughs> so we as a body are going to send her off. What a joy it has been to, to serve with these women. Amen. As we move to our time of prayer, we have some joys and concerns to lift up. Um, this past Thursday, we did celebrate the life of Patricia Jones here in our sanctuary, and prayers for her family 
are appreciated during these days. We also add to our list um, Jackie. Uh, Jackie's classmate, Sean Younglove, lost his battle with pancreatic cancer, asking for prayers for family and friends. Um, luckily, many of us got to see him um, last weekend before he passed. So that's from Jackie. So we share prayers for your friend and your friend's family. Also, um, Susan Robertson asks for prayers for a safe trip to Africa <laughs> with lots of, oh, I can't read that, um, something, and not, <laughs> I'm sorry, Susan, I can't read all your notes. Look, Right, yes, that's what it says, <laughs> with lots of animals, but hopefully no health issues. So pray for our Miss Susan. And we want to say a very special welcome to a couple of new people over here. We want to welcome Vanessa and Quentin, who are Todd and Luann's new foster children. So we welcome them. You didn't know I was going to do that, did you? <laughs> I embarrassed you. Yes, Mary. I just wanted to thank everybody for prayers and stuff for Karen. She went, was supposed to go home uh, Friday, but she went home Saturday and was home Sunday. She was in the hospital for two weeks. Um, so she was really bad. <laughs> but she's real glad to be home. Thanks a lot, guys. You're awesome. All right. Let us sing our song of prayer. As I share this prayer on this Memorial Day Sunday, there will be a time of silence where if you would like to share aloud the name of a loved one who has gone before us, you are welcome to do that in that space. Let us pray. Almighty God, before whom stand the living and the dead, we, your children, whose mortal life is but a hand's breadth, thanks to you. For all those through whom you have blessed our pilgrimage, whose lives have empowered us, whose influence is a healing grace, we lift up thankful hearts. For the dear friends and family members whose faces we see no more, but whose love is with us forever, we lift up thankful hearts. For the teachers and companions of our childhood and youth, and for the members of your household of faith who worship you now in heaven, we lift up thankful hearts. For those who sacrifice themselves, our brothers and sisters who have given their lives for the sake of others, we lift up thankful hearts. In these moments, we name aloud those who have touched our lives, but who have gone before us.
that we may hold them all in continual remembrance and ever think of them as with you in that city whose gates are not shut by day and where there is no night. We give you thanks that we may now be dedicated to working for a world where labor is rewarded, fear dispelled, and the nations made one. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Day by day, we magnify you and worship your name forever and ever. And holy God, we lift up this prayer in your name as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Ooh. Our scripture today comes from Acts 2, 1, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting, divided tongues as of fire appearing among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this, this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in native language of each, in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pergia and Pamphla, Egypt and the parts of Libya, Libya, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying, one to, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are all filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Loving God, send your spirit upon us that as your scripture has been read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what it is you have to say to us this day. Amen. Alleluia, come spirit, come. Alleluia, come spirit, come. So about 20 days ago, in fact, actually exactly 20 days ago, um, the Dillon family had to say goodbye to Casper the Friendly Dog. So um, some of you know that um, he wasn't doing really well. We were able to enjoy 13 years of good life with our sweet puppy. Um, and I don't really want to dwell on it so much as um, I'm going to tell you something, but, but I am really proud of my kids. I did want to let you know that, that I gave them the day that we ended up having to put him to sleep. His arthritis was just so bad all the way up into his spine. They couldn't do anything else for him. Shots weren't working. He wasn't eating, that kind of stuff. Um, I kept giving the kids outs, like, you can stay home. No, they weren't going to stay home. You can stay in the waiting room. No, they weren't going to stay in the waiting room. They stayed with that puppy, our puppy, till the very end. They petted him, they laughed, they cried, they told him he was a good dog, and they were just so sweet, bless their hearts, just there every moment until he was gone. But that's not the sad part. I, I don't want to tell you the sad part, right? That's not really what I wanted to tell you. It's just that since he's been gone, it's only been about 20 days, but we still, we go in the back door, you know, unlock the door and open the door, and I still get that feeling like you're going to hear him get up and kind of click, 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 click on our hardwood floors, right, to come and greet us. Or I'll hear little noises in the house, and I'm like, oh, well, that's Casper. Well, no, it's not Casper. Or when I get all the laundry out of the dryer, because I do it all at once, you know, like up in my face and everything, and I'm walking to my room to go dump it on the bed, where I usually fold it, right? I still am doing the step over Casper <laughs> in the hall where he used to lay all the time. And he's not there, but there's just kind of this feeling like he is there. Almost like I can kind of feel his spirit lingering in some sort of ways. And I know he's just a dog, but he was our Casper the Friendly Dog, you know? Anyway. Today is Pentecost, as has been shared already. And we hear the story 
of this time when the disciples, the apostles, the followers of Jesus are gathered together. And you know, I know that it's Pentecost now, and Easter was like, I don't know, almost two months ago, at least in our liturgical calendar. And so we have some distance from this thing called Easter and this thing called Good Friday, but the disciples really didn't. In fact, as we read the gospel accounts, especially the account of Luke that just seems to flow right into Acts, this is mere days, mere days after Jesus died and then was resurrected and came to be with the disciples for, you know, a little while, a couple of days or whatever. And then Jesus ascended, Acts chapter 1, and now the disciples are left. I mean, it's just days. They are still deep in their grief and deep in their fear. What's going to happen now, now that he's gone? And I, for one, at least in this moment, really feel for the disciples. I mean, we had 13 years with our Casper. The disciples had three, a mere three years with Jesus. Their leader, their friend, the host of divinity right before their eyes. And now they're alone. And they're sitting around eating sloppy joes, I hear. <laughs> and there's the rush of a violent wind, right? And as Glenda says, we know wind here in Cheyenne, here in Wyoming. We know wind. And we've heard, probably, the saying, the winds of change, right? We've all heard that saying. We all know that Maybe not in Cheyenne, where it kind of blows incessantly, but, you know, in other places where the wind might bring just a little bit of a different feeling, right? Oh, the wind is a little bit colder now. Maybe there's a cold front coming in. Or maybe you can feel a little bit of moisture in the wind, and so we're going to get some precipitation, right? The winds of change means literally that you feel a change coming in the wind, and the winds of change literally and figuratively blew through the lives of the disciples. Whether they wanted it or not, the wind came, and things changed. Things changed. So I was reflecting um, in the last couple of weeks that in May of 2005 was when I was first installed as a student local pastor at the Loveland First United Methodist Church. So I realized that this month of this year marks 10 years of me being in appointed ministry in the United Methodist Church. And 10 years is a long time sometimes, you know? And I think back on it, and I know that when I was a student local pastor, I served with other pastors. There were two other clergy people there, so I didn't do it all. It wasn't until 2006 when I went to St. James um, that I had my first solo pastor appointment and got to do all of the things that I do now. And I'm just thinking 10 years is a long time to preach every Sunday to go through the different celebrations of the church every year. I wonder how many phone calls that means, how many visits to the hospital or to a life care center, how many meetings. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. I know that sometimes I feel like, oh, I've done this for 10 years. I know it all. Right? And in knowing it all, kind of get myself into certain ruts or patterns that may or may not be good. I know this last year, I've been so blessed by these lovely women, Vet and Leah, who have helped me remember that I don't know it all. Oh. 
that have helped me remember that I'm a lifelong learner. And that just because someone um, is kind of before me and I can see myself maybe in them 10 years ago, that there's still a lot that I can learn from that person. I've learned so much from you, ladies. I think from, I've learned so much and I was trying to think about how do I encapsulate like what I've learned from them. But I think that here's at least one thing that I've learned. I think from that I have learned to continue to question tradition. <laughs> and from Leah, I've learned to continue to value tradition. And I know that that may seem like it's contradictory, but it's not. They actually go so nicely, hand in hand, the continuing questioning and valuing of things we've always known, of things we've always done, of traditions in the church. And I'm sad that this is coming to an end, but I pray that as we all move on and the next steps of ministry, that I can hear a little bit of Vet's voice, and I can hear a little bit of Leah's voice as I encounter new traditions in a new church, or as I encounter new people and new ways of doing things. If I could just keep a portion of their spirit with me, I know it will increase my ministry with others. The winds of change blow, <laughs> whether you want them to or not. And change comes, and we have choices in those changes, whether we just endure the change or whether we are open to being transformed by it. I don't know if it's just me, but I have started to understand maybe the intimacy of what God's spirit means in a much deeper way the older I get. I mean, if you think back to when you were a kid, if you were one that grew up in the church, if you're one that has heard this story of Pentecost and, you know, any kind of mention of the Spirit of God over and over and over again, when you're younger, you think, oh, okay, the Spirit of God, right? And you kind of get these visions of maybe books or movies where there's like a ghost, right? The Holy Ghost. And so we don't have much to compare what is the Spirit of God other than like, you know, Casper the Friendly Ghost, right? Something that's there but not really there. Something that you know but you don't really know. Something that you can't touch or feel but you're supposed to feel. But the older I get, the more intimately I kind of understand what that spirit of God might be. I've told you before how wonderful and amazing my grandmother was, right? Juanita Bell Joyner, my mama's mama. My parents are here, by the way. Love to have them here. It's fun. Um, and she was just the best. Like, and I don't even think I'm sugarcoating it. Like, really. I mean, my mom's great, but she's no Juanita Bell Joyner. You know what I mean? Like, my <laughs> no, ask her. She'll tell you, too. Like, she seriously was the sweetest, most loving person I've ever known. And she loved everybody, and she really meant it. And I feel like if I could just have a portion of her spirit, if I could be just a little bit like her, then I would be a 100% better person than I am now. And sometimes I can hear her voice or see her face, and it makes me want to be a better person. I think about my friend Crystal Gale, not the singer, whom I've told you about before also. When I was growing up, my sister and I and Crystal Gale, we were the youth group, the three of us. And Crystal just had this great spirit of life. 
enthusiasm and energy, and she just wanted to embrace life and suck every essence, you know, every bit of essence from it, right? And then about 16 years ago, she died in a car wreck. And if I could be just a little bit like Crystal, if I could just have a, a, little, a little drop of what she had, I would be a fuller person. I think about people here at Grace that I've encountered. I was thinking about Ted Conan. Man, what unflagging commitment to God and country. Just a drop. Just a drop is all I want. I've been thinking about Jeff. And you know how Jeff Palak was? That, I mean, all the years I was here until he passed, what did you do in the office? You had something that needed to be done, you called Jeff, right? <laughs> Jeff? And you'd say, it's not a big deal, you don't have to come, I'll be there in five minutes, right? He just had boundless energy. He just wanted to help everybody that he could help, always, without a question, always. I'm just a little drop. thinking about Shirley Hitchcock and her quiet grace and dang determination to live. And I want just a little drop. I was thinking about Pat Jones and when we were here um, doing her service this last week. I was so touched and impressed by just the love and the respect that her family had for her. I mean, family was this whole middle section plus a little bit on the front. And they were so dedicated to the love that she shared with them and that they gave right back. Not just a little drop. I'm sure if the disciples had been given a choice, they would have chosen something different. They would have said, yeah, we want Jesus to stay. We want Jesus with us, not just for three years, but for 30 or more. We want Jesus with us until our dying day. Please just leave him so we can hear his voice, so we can see his face, so that we can touch him and know that he's real. But the winds of change came, whether they wanted them to or not. And they received and didn't just endure the transformation, but embraced the Spirit of God. I've been thinking about our Casper the Friendly Dog, and not just how, you know, much he meant to me and teaches you those little things like animals teach you, like it's, it's a good thing to stop and scratch behind the ears. It's, it's a good thing to take a moment and just enjoy each other's company. But I've also thought about, um, you know, Casper's relationship with our kiddos and how much that meant to them and how their lives have been different because of that. And it's not so much that I miss him, because I do miss him and I am sad, but it's not so much that. But as I remember him, it just makes me think that with the next canine friend, and there will be a next canine friend, Jimbo. <laughs> that I want to be a better owner. I want to be a better friend to that new one. And if that's the kind of transformation that a dog can make in your life, 
then how much more the Spirit of Christ? How much more the Spirit of God? Alleluia, come Spirit, come. Alleluia, come Spirit, come. I pray these have been the words of the Lord for us this day. Amen. Please stand and join with us in our closing We're going to sing and we're going to be quiet when the Spirit says be quiet. As you're standing, I invite you to reach out your hand to those around you. Don't let anybody stand alone, but let us be connected. Let us be the body of Christ in this place. And as you go from this place, may the love of God, the grace and peace of Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and forever. Amen. Amen.